This is a showdown between three giants in word processing software. We are going to compare features, processes, and outcomes across 17 tasks to identify a winner. The first giant is Pages, developed by Apple and released in 2005. The second is none other than Word, developed by Microsoft and released in 1983. And finally, Google Docs, released in 2006. While only one can win, this race is neck and neck, with each software excelling in various tasks and catering to different users. In our comparison, let's start with cost. Google Docs takes the lead here as it's free for everyone. Apple Pages is also free, but only to Mac users, and it's not available on Windows, so reaches only 30% of the market. On the other hand, Microsoft Word is seldom free and usually requires a purchase, which is a drawback. The second item I like to compare is the interface, the ribbon, the menu options. Apple Pages features a clean, modern, and well-organized interface. You can minimize the toolbar and side panels. Word interface offers many options and can feel a bit overwhelming, especially to new users. There are often multi-step processes to get a task done. The interface seems clutter a bit, although you can also minimize the ribbon and side panels. The Google Docs interface is clean and modern, but it might seem a bit too minimal, making you wonder where all the options are. Since Google Docs operates solely in the browser, it can be confusing sometimes to distinguish between the Docs menu options and the browsers. When you compare the software side by side, you can see how much more real estate you get with Pages. Word looks a bit cluttered, but you do have the option to hide the ribbon. Google Docs has the smallest workspace area as some of the top is occupied by the browser. And this matters especially when working on smaller screens. When comparing the menu options, you will notice common items, but each also brings some unique features. When you select the menu item in Pages and Word, you can easily see it as it is highlighted in blue. Google Docs selections are not very visible. Pages leads the pack with the most keyboard shortcuts in its menu, followed by Word. In contrast, Google Docs has fewer keyboard shortcuts, but it complements this with visual icons next to menu items for quick recognition of ribbon functions. I really like that. So who's the winner here? Pages takes the lead with its clean and modern interface. Word closely follows with a multitude of options, even though it can be overwhelming. Google Docs come in less, even though it has simple and clean interface, it can seem limiting. It is constrained by its browser operation and potentially confusing menus for some users. Which software is the most user-friendly from the start with the lowest learning curve? Pages features a clean, modern design that creates an uncluttered and well-organized workspace. It offers a wide range of beautifully designed templates and provides automatic file saving along with helpful thumbnails for navigation. Pages is beginner-friendly and seamlessly integrates with the Mac operating system. While it is free, it is exclusive to Mac users, making it inaccessible to PC owners. Microsoft Word can be challenging to use due to its complex interface, multi-step processes, an extensive feature set, which can overwhelm new users. It has a steeper learning curve, although anyone can start using it right away to write a basic document. It is frequently used in a professional environment, so has a large user base, but it is rarely free. Google Docs is incredibly accessible, as it is available to anyone with an email address through Google account. It boasts the lowest entry barrier since it operates in a web browser, making it universally available across various computer platforms. It is user-friendly with its automatic saving, exceptional sharing capabilities, and straightforward design. However, it relies on an internet connection for access. So which software is most user-friendly? Both Pages and Google Docs are beginner-friendly due to their clean interfaces and automatic save features. 
In contrast, Word can be quite intimidating and overwhelming, particularly for new users. Now let's compare the three software and their features. Apple Pages has many helpful and unique features that make it a great word processing software. It offers automatic saving to ensure your work is always protected. Creating multi-column documents and giving them a newspaper-like feel by adding drop caps is a breeze. You can quickly reduce your file size right from the menu, making it easier to share large documents. Another unique feature is the ability to export your documents such as flyers as images. Pages has a helpful feature for adding captions to figures, tables and images and formatting tables is the easiest in Pages. Having plenty of beautiful templates with modern design and typography helps you quickly get started with a polished document. You can also create newsletters, labels and envelopes in Pages. Features like page thumbnails help you organize your files and being able to add watermarks quickly so your audience realizes the work is not final are a couple of other useful tools. One unique feature is the ability to publish your documents as books directly to Apple iBooks. You can easily protect your documents with passwords or save your files as templates so you do not have to reinvent the wheel each time you work on a similar project. You can collaborate with others and track changes, and you do not need to save your file to the cloud to revert to a previous version of your document, as your document versions are saved automatically. Pages have a decent set of features that will satisfy most users. Among the word processing tools, Microsoft Word offers the widest range of features. It boasts an extensive collection of styles to format your documents. Viewing thumbnails makes navigating documents much easier. You can also add hundreds of additional fonts to your files. It also offers a sample cover page for your document. Another unique feature is the ability to insert smart graphics that can show processes and hierarchy relationships. Word has many table of contents header and footers templates so that you don't have to start from scratch. You can also add footnotes and endnotes to your files. Another unique feature is the ability to research topics within the application. You can easily add citations and bibliography to your documents. Another little gem is being able to create a table of figures, which I could not create in pages. Few other prominent features are many themes, colors, being able to add watermarks to your work, all of which are easily accomplished in Word. Word's functionality can be extended even further with a wide range of add-ins. Word allows you to share documents as read-only so nobody can change your original file. You can also reduce your file size right from the application. Interesting export option is the ability to save your files as web pages by exporting HTML and CSS code. You can share and collaborate with others on Word documents once you upload them to OneDrive. When you have access to Microsoft Word, you can log in to office.com for online access to your documents. Here you have some really unique features, like a tool called the designer, which can quickly help you change the overall look of your documents. You can also add add-ins right online. Word also has a Grammarly-like tool called Editor that provides writing and grammar help, although it was not very helpful. Another pretty cool and new feature is the ability to export your Word document to a PowerPoint presentation, which will AI generate a draft slides for you. A very practical feature is being able to open the same document in multiple windows, so you could work on different sections side by side. Finally, you can create macros to perform repetitious actions and automate tasks. And if you know coding, you can use VBA, Visual Basic for Application, to add even more advanced functionality to your work. Password protecting your files is also easy, as well as creating labels and envelopes. Word has many features that are geared for beginner to super advanced users.
Google Docs offer a wide array of user-friendly features for seamless document management. You can minimize the ribbon for a clutter-free interface and the document's outline is very helpful, although having thumbnails would be better. You can provide feedback with comments and set your documents to be available offline in case you don't have internet access. Google Docs are automatically saved and all users are able to revert to previous version of the document easily. Another unique feature is the ability to export your documents as web pages with HTML and CSS code. You can also export it as EPUB and publish your document as a book on Amazon or Google Books. Similar to Word, Google Docs has a vast library of extension to extend Docs functionality. And if you know coding, you can also use Apps Script to create custom workflows and automate processes. Google Docs supports citations in your files and you can also compare two separate documents. Another unique feature is being able to fully translate your files to another language within seconds. Accessible friendly feature is voice typing and a fun feature is the extensive emoji library. A feature that is mainly available in Google Docs is the ability to add smart chips to your documents, which allow access to additional information on certain content, such as people. Above all, its standout feature is the ease and speed with which you can share documents or publish them online, facilitating seamless collaboration. Additionally, it provides the option to initiate meetings with the team working on the file. The Google Docs version that we have here is the free version, but you can extend it even further if you upgrade to Google Workspace. The clear winner here is Microsoft Word, offering a comprehensive range of basic, intermediate, advanced, and the highly advanced features. Google Docs takes second place with a feature set similar to Pages, but being accessible to a wider audience and with the added benefit of extendable functionality through extensions. Pages closely follows with unique features, but its simplicity and appealing design are the main factors contributing to its popularity. Pages offers templates that are beautiful with modern typography and colors but lacks infographic resume templates. It has a medium-sized library of templates, although some helpful variety like landscape files and flyers. Word has hundreds of templates, including a huge selection of infographic resumes. However, the typography is not very modern and the colors are bland. And the templates are not organized by category, but rather you have to use the search function. Google Docs has a limited selection of templates and they are quite plain in design. It has only a couple of resume templates that are very basic and you can't use a search to find them. So who's the winner here? Words takes the lead in this category as it has many, many more templates to choose from. Even though some of the design is dated, it is easier to change fonts and colors than setting up a new design. Pages is second with its beautiful design, which can be the hardest part of setting up a file. Google Docs is last in this category as it offers a very basic and limited number of templates to choose from. Let's compare the three word processing software by actually completing report writing tasks. I'm going to copy and paste a sample text to each software. The first thing I want to test is being able to paste the text without formatting, so no unnecessary formats such as text background gets copied over. And all the platforms were able to do that. One thing that didn't work that well in Google Docs was being able to zoom in and out to screen size. Since Google Docs is operating in the browser, there are two different ways to zoom in and out on your document, which can be confusing. Using the fit option worked the best. There was no issue in pages and word. All three also had the option to remove the red underline for lorem ipsum text, which was indicating a misspelling and can be irritating. In our matchup, both pages and word performed just as well, while docs lagged behind, particularly with less user-friendly zoom, making it frustrating to adjust the document to screen size. 
Viewing thumbnails while working on a document is very helpful in terms of quick navigation between sections, organization, and faster editing. This is one feature that is very helpful in any word processing software. Both Pages and Word allow you to view thumbnails of your documents, while Google Docs doesn't have that option. You can see an outline of your document, but only after you style it with headings, so after you do a lot of work in laying it out. Therefore, both Pages and Word are better in this aspect. Font and formatting are essential in word processing software to organize, emphasize, and enhance readability of your work. In Pages, you can change the font and format quickly by using the side panel. Pages has a medium number of pre-installed fonts and you can add more, however, the process is not easy. You would have to add the new font to your system to show up in Pages. Word has the most pre-installed fonts and you can quickly and easily add more by clicking on the download option next to its name. Google Docs has a few pre-installed fonts, but it is super easy to add any of the hundreds of Google fonts available through the More Fonts option. The process is very simple. Therefore, in the aspect of fonts and formatting, Word and Google Docs lead the way while Pages comes a bit behind because of how challenging it can be for new users to add new fonts. It would be very hard to read a document without styling. You wouldn't be able to tell where different chapters are, what's important, and you would be exhausted reading it. In Pages, you can use the styling options under Format and apply different headings and subheading styles to your documents. What is even quicker is being able to copy and paste styles to your sections of text by using the command and option plus C or V shortcuts. Once you have your document body of text categorized, you can very quickly change the style throughout by just updating the style itself. In similar fashion, you can do the same thing in Word. Apply different headings to sections of your document. You can also use the copy and paste style shortcuts by using the command control plus C or V keys. However, the abundance of formatting options in Word can sometimes feel overwhelming, especially when several steps are required to implement a single change, often involving multiple pop-up boxes that need to be navigated and closed. Google Docs has few heading options, but for most users this will suffice. You can also change and update the styles very quickly. What was also really neat is that I was able to select multiple text lines at once and then apply the style to it, rather than do one at a time or use copy and paste style option, which is also available here. One thing that was unnecessarily complicated and cumbersome was adding separate indents for first and rest of the body of text. In Pages and Word, it was much easier. Overall, Pages emerged as a winner here. The entire process was smooth, fast, and more straightforward experience. Word was good also, but it was a bit overwhelming with so many options and pop-up boxes. Google Docs was really great and simple until I had to add indents to my text. Therefore, Word and Docs fell a little short behind Pages in styling. Another common task user might need to perform is inserting a table. I have a simple Excel table that I will copy into each software. After insertion, it's immediately evident that it looks fantastic in Pages, fairly good in Word, and quite messy in Google Docs. Next, I will make some modifications to the table in each software. I would like to create a header row that repeats across two pages when the table overflows. Add some color to the header row and add alternating row colors. Achieving this was a breeze in pages. In Word, I had trouble getting the alternating row colors. Even though the banded row option was selected, it was not working. It was easy though to find the repeat header row option and change the header row colors. But for the life of me, I could not make the rows alternate in color. I tried different ways and finally just gave up. The Excel pasted table looked the worst in Google Docs. I didn't even know where to start trying to fix it. 
The menu at the top is so tiny, I didn't even notice the table options at the top, only later I saw it after it took me some time to find it buried at the bottom of a submenu. I was finally able to add a repeated header row after much time, but there is no option to alternate color rows, unless you do it manually. One other thing that was frustrating were the various options appearing when I hovered over the table that led to unintended clicks and changes. Inserting and formatting a table was only smoothing pages. It was cumbersome and little annoying in Word, and it was exhausting and very frustrating in Google Docs. Another thing that users often need to do is to insert an image. So I will insert a simple image into each software, try to change its layout and size, and remove the background. Let's see how our competitors do. In Pages, I was able to change the text wrapping option, although it is not always easy to tell what each options mean until you tested it out. I was able to resize the image and even use the Remove Background option to make the background transparent. In Word, there are numerous formatting options for your images. It can be a bit challenging to figure out what each option does because they're all collapsed. You have to go through each one to find what you need. I could easily resize the image and adjust the text wrapping, but removing the background seems quite difficult. I eventually just gave up. In Google Docs, it was pretty straightforward to resize, change the text wrapping options, and format my image. There was no option, however, to remove the background. In summary, Pages emerges as the preferred choice here in its pretty easy image editing options and easy background removal. Word and Google Docs share the second spot with Word offering a wide range of options that can be overwhelming and sometimes hard to make them work, while Docs is straightforward but lacks certain features. Section and page breaks are crucial for dividing documents into manageable and reader-friendly parts. Adding headers, footers, and page numbers helps readers identify their location and track their reading progress within the document. Adding section breaks in pages is straightforward, and using thumbnails to determine good areas for split is very helpful. Once they are added though, you can't easily tell where each section ends. So to see the section breaks, you have to show invisibles, which indicate formatting marks in blue color that can easily be selected and removed. For headers and footers, hovering over the top or bottom of your document makes adding them relatively simple. There are a few styles to choose from for page numbers. Word offers similar options of inserting page and section breaks. Being able to view thumbnails also helps. Selecting the paragraph mark on the ribbon quickly shows you where sections end and you can easily change them. The section indicators are even better than in pages as they spell out what they are, while in pages sometimes you can't tell what is a page versus section break. Word offers many more selections of possible formatting and placements for your header, footer, and page numbers. In Google Docs, you can use a shortcut to insert page breaks, but the inserting section break option is buried at the bottom of a submenu. You can also view and remove all non-printing characters with ease, especially the descriptions of what they are is provided. The lack of thumbnails, though, makes it hard to determine your location and find good spots for section breaks. You can insert headers and footers easily, but there are no pre-made templates and very limiting options to style page numbers. So which one comes out on top? Word definitely takes the lead with its extensive break options, clear paragraph indicators, and a wide variety of header, footer, and page templates. Pages follows in second, offering a user-friendly view of thumbnails for document division, several page number options, but it lacks predefined header and footer templates and has hard to identify icons for page and section breaks. Google Docs comes in third because of the absence of thumbnails, unnecessary laborious steps to insert section breaks, lack of predefined headers and footers, and limited page number formats. For longer documents, you may need to create a table of contents to ease navigation between sections and help readers find information. 
Let's see how easy it is to create and format table of content in each software. When you insert table of contents in pages, it recognizes and lists some of your styled headings. If you didn't assign any style in your documents, none of the software will identify any TOC headings. I'm able to select which paragraph style I want to include in my table and am able to format each level of headings easily. I can add indents to different levels as well as page numbers. Clicking on each heading takes me to that section. In Word, you have a selection of table of contents templates to choose from as well as modify or create a custom table. There are many options to choose from, but the TOC doesn't look even remotely as good as it did in Pages. Again, I don't like that there are multi-level boxes keep popping up to make simple changes. I can select different heading styles to be included, add indents and page numbers. Google Docs offers only three table of content styles, but they are all pretty modern visually. I could easily add page numbers, but I couldn't add all of my heading styles. Since I styled some of my headings as subtitles, I could not add them to the TOC. I had to go back and reassign each of them individually to another heading level before I could add it to TOC. That was a bit of a hassle. Once I did that though, I was able to show multiple level table of contents with indents and page numbers. The table of contents created in pages was most modern, flexible and easy to modify. Word also had all the options that pages had, but the process was very cumbersome with too many pop-up boxes and the TOC didn't look as polished and modern. Google Docs had fewest options to modify your table, but it had the important things like indentation, page numbers, and pretty modern look. Although it required a lot of extra work to get my headings to show up. In today's environment, regardless of the word processing tool, seamless sharing and collaborations are essential. Many projects, even personal ones, often involve multiple users working together, sometimes in real time. Sharing files on a centralized platform avoids version confusion. All three platforms allow you to share and collaborate on files. Pages does it through iCloud, Word does it through OneDrive, and Google Docs does it through Google Drive. In order to share your file, you have to first upload it to cloud, which means store it online somewhere. When you store files online, it's only free for a little bit, before you know it, you will be asked to upgrade for more storage. Google Drive offers 15 gigabytes of free storage per account, and we all have multiple Google accounts, so it is more generous. Apple iCloud and Microsoft OneDrive offer only 5 gigabytes of free storage. I am always running out of the free storage on all three platforms. Always. In Pages, you can share your files as a copy and send it via emails, etc., or you can save it to iCloud and select to collaborate on the file. You can save a copy of your file to iCloud, which actually moves the file there, and you can see it when you select the Finder and iCloud Drive. You can also go to iCloud.com and log into your account that way. You can share the file with specific people or create a link that anyone can access, view, and even edit. However, the process was glitchy. I had to create the link several times and it was not working and processing for a very long time. I pasted the link into incognito window to show you how changes appear in the original file, but it was not working and was telling me I was offline which was not true since everything was running in the browsers. It was a bit cumbersome to remove sharing access. Finally, I found the option to do that, but the process was not smooth. You can share Word to Microsoft OneDrive Cloud Storage. You can either move the file there or share a copy. It was taking a little bit of time moving my file there, even though this was a small document, OneDrive, however, has been very reliable storage for me, and we do have Microsoft 365 subscription, so we get the one terabyte of free storage. To share a file, you select it and click Share, and you get even more options for sharing than Google Docs. You can share with selected people or anyone, 
either by sending access to the file or link. You can let people view or edit. And this is the best part, set expiration date for the link as well as set a password. OneDrive doesn't look very modern though, but when you log in to office.com and view your files there, Microsoft 365 layout is beautiful. You can access your online documents here and share, but you can only delete them on OneDrive, which may not be very obvious. What is also super easy is managing and removing sharing access. When I opened the shared link in incognito window, the changes that I made were pretty fast. Sharing Google Docs is super easy. This is the main advantage and selling point of Google Drive. You can share your files with restricted users or anyone and let other users be just viewers, commentators, or editors. There are several ways to share your file. This process was super quick and smooth. When I pasted the link into incognito window, any changes I made were pretty instantaneous and I could watch it in real time with the anonymous user indicator. To stop sharing a link that was available to anyone, you have to change it to restricted access, which is definitely not obvious, but you can see that this worked as the file would no longer load without a login. Google Drive sharing and collaborating features are the best, and that is what Google is known for. That is why Google Drive has the largest market share for file sharing as 94% of people use it in some way. About 55% of users use multiple cloud storage providers so have experience with all of them, like myself. Microsoft OneDrive experience is also very smooth and reliable, although not as easy as that of Google Docs. Apple's iCloud sharing process for pages was awful. It was the slowest and very glitchy, not straightforward, and very frustrating to make it work. The worst thing that can happen is having a good idea, spending a lot of time working on it, to only find out the work was not saved. This is never an issue with pages, as autosave is automatically enabled. Actually, there is no way for you to disable it. It is always running on all the documents you have in the cloud or on your local computer. Additionally, Pages saves all versions of your document and you can retrieve it by going to revert to and browse all versions. Since Word has been in the word processing space the longest, we all have experienced losing a version of our Word file, but Microsoft has put in some options in place to make this better. You do have to actually save your file from time to time when you're working on it in Word. The only way to have all your changes instantaneously saved is by moving the file to OneDrive and saving a copy online. Only if you do that, you will have access to different versions of your file, which is unfortunate as that is a very helpful feature that both Pages and Google Docs have. One extra protection that Microsoft Files have is the auto recovery feature that by default auto saves your file every 10 minutes. You can, though, go to Word Preferences and change that to less time, as well as check to have a backup copy of your file. When you try to save your file in Google Docs, you won't be able to find a save option on the menu, because all Google files are saved with every change, and you can access all the versions of your file through the File menu, and easily revert to a previous version of your document. Therefore, both Google Docs and Pages excel at keeping your current file version safe as well as being able to revert to a previous version. There is nothing extra for you to do. Word falls short in this regard as you either have to save your file to iCloud to get to automatic save option and version control, or when using your file on your desktop, you have to rely on auto recovery function to recover on save changes. If you want access to previous versions on your desktop, you would need to keep making copies of your file along the way, which is a very backward solution. Let's test out the compatibility of Pages, Word, and Google Docs. In order to open a document made in another format, you need to access an exported copy. All three have many of the same export functions. You can save each as a PDF, Word, and rich text format. 
You also have some export options available in one or two of the platforms, such as exporting the file as a web page, EPUB, or images. I save the copy of each file as Word and we will test it out how it is to open these versions in each platform. Most of the time, the compatibility is pretty good, unless advanced features are used that are not available across platforms. Then you may need to make adjustments after importing the file. Word is the gold standard of word processing. Most platforms can open a Word doc and they are very compatible across many platforms. Pages can easily open a Word.docs file as the compatibility is pretty good, except you may sometimes be missing fonts that you need to replace. Pages can also easily open Google Docs files, which are exported as Word. Google Docs doesn't have a specific file extension, and the only way to export Google Docs file is to save it as Word or another type. No other platform can open that pages file. You need to export it to either Word or PDF to be even accessible for import. In Word, when you open the pages file that was saved as Word, the compatibility is excellent. There is minimal change in the format. That is also true of the Google Docs that was saved as Word. Microsoft Word has no trouble opening the file and there is almost no difference from the original. To open files in Google Docs, you have to upload them to Google Drive and the process does require a couple more steps. Docs can open the Word file and Pages save this Word, but it can't open that Pages file. Both imports to Docs are very close to the original. Therefore, without a doubt, Microsoft Word is a winner here, since all the platforms use .docs files and are very compatible with it. Word files are easily opened by many different platforms. Google Docs is second here, as it pretty much reverts to Docs file when exported. And Pages is in third place because the .pages extension can only be opened by Pages and has to be saved as .docs or another format to be accessible. When it comes to printing setup and options, all three are quite similar. With Pages, what was great is that you could preview the document in real time while you were changing print options. You could add a watermark and see how it would look on your print file. Word also had a print preview option, but it was not in real time. You could not see how the watermark that we added would look relative to the page. Google Docs had the least amount of print setup options, and even though you could preview the document being printed, you could not add a watermark. Not by a lot, but Pages is a winner here. It stands out because it offers a live preview while adjusting print settings, and you can add watermarks. Word is second as it also has all the same features but lacks the live preview. And Google Docs come in last, with limited print options and no ability to add watermarks. So which software is the best? Well, that depends. Pages excels in many areas, securing the most first places and performing exceptionally in certain tasks, although it falls short in a few. Word, on the other hand, is a versatile workhorse, capable of handling a wide range of functions, though not particularly excelling in any one area. Google Docs is a practical choice, performing decently in many aspects, excelling in a few and lagging behind in others. Each software has its strength and the best choice depends on your specific needs. Pages may be your go-to for book writing on a Mac, Word for complex reports, and Google Docs for online access and simple file sharing. They all have their merits, and personally, I use each one at different times. Understanding the limitations and standout features of each software allows you to choose the right tool for the right purpose. Thanks so much for watching.